Hello and thank you for joining us on the Tuesday edition of Journalist Hangout. I'm Ayo Dili Ozubakun. The coronavirus pandemic continues to spread in Nigeria, so we keep we need to keep ourselves safe by staying indoors and maintaining social distance more. Today on the program, SGF dispels fear over arrival of Chinese health experts, says they will not directly treat Nigerian coronavirus patients. And Lagos State intensifies distribution of food items to residents. And later on the show, Chadian president warned Boko Haram leader Abubakar Shekau to surrender or risk deaths as insurgents relocate from Chad Island to Kundumbali. I'll be hanging out with Babajide Kolade Ustoju and Solomon Ajuzogu. So if you're ready, let the hangout start now. Thank you for joining us. Rather than inspiring hope, the impending arrival of Chinese health officials to Nigeria to join in the fight against coronavirus is sending jitters down the spine of many citizens. The reason is not far-fetched, given the relationship between China and COVID-19. But the secretary to the government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, has dispelled such fear. Mustafa said, since the Chinese doctors are not accredited, to practice in Nigeria, they will not be directly involved in treating coronavirus patients in the country. According to him, they will only be relied upon for information on COVID-19. Meanwhile, Lagos State is intensifying efforts to get relief items to people. Let's hear from the people on the streets. relief pack from the Lagos State Government. We say a big thank you. This is to support Para Africa Foundation. This is the second batch. We got the first batch yesterday. And um, it's precisely from the Ministry of Agriculture. Our commissioner, our honorable commissioner has been very, very supportive. And my essay to Honorable Bisola, you were awesome. And this is to support our own veteran actors. Not that they are beggars, but we need to take care of our elders. Meanwhile, the people that are vulnerable to, that really need food, we are going to try our best possible to get it across to them. So we have beans, rice, gari, tin tomato, bread, and a whole lot more. Kudos to the Lagos State Government. They are trying, they are doing awesome to, to Lagosians, and I, I must say, well done. We are very grateful. On behalf of all the cities and committee in our SCD, I say thank you and bravo to the state government and state government for this and the big package. People have been very eager. Since the lockdown, everybody has been indoor and everybody has been a bit irritant looking for something. So the supply is coming at the time. But the promise you can get the one just a couple of us as you I'm at the We take So by that the So we take with us. 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 We take with Welcome back. I also have some relief back from the Lagos State Government here. Quite heavy, Baba Jide. And um, Lagos State Government COVID-19 Emergency Food Response coordinated by Ministry of Agriculture. I also have bread. bread here. Mm -hmm. And it's quite heavy. 
Yes, it is. What do you have inside? Do you, do you have any idea? Uh, rice. I think rice. Um, this, is, this is a big bag of rice. Let's see. If, uh, okay, let oh, me see. It's, it's this should be Gary. Yeah, I think. Guys, rice this down. Like rice. Rice. Um, beans. I think I can feel beans. Okay. And uh, Gary. Okay. Uh, people, this is Gary on top of the pile. Okay. Mm, so I believe that our people. You see, the whole idea is to reach out to the most vulnerable in our society. And most the vulnerable. Most vulnerable. Not everybody. Not everyone. Not the 22 million Lagosians. That is the mistake that some of our people are making. If you are. Um, on the employment of the state government, for example, you are not, the most vulnerable. You, are not you are not amongst the so most you can't vulnerable. be complaining that so, has not gotten to you. Yes, it is not for the 22 million uh, uh, residents of Lagos. There is no way the government can, can provide this kind of thing for everyone. Don't also forget that the government, even at this time, uh, this capacity to earn money is the largely blunted. So. I the very poor people, people who are above a 60, you know, they are amongst the people who should benefit from this. You are above all those um, retirees, they have nowhere, they can't struggle at this time, they can't mm. hustle, you know. Yeah. Uh -huh. They can't double their hustle as the mm. young people <laughs> can do, you know. So they are the ones who are to benefit from this. And it is international standard. During um, uh, wars, it's uh, the same kind of um, 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 steps that the UN takes. Um, organizations will come up with relief materials and all that. It's usually not available for everyone. It's just not possible. That must be emphasized. Yes, it's just not possible to be able to feed everyone at this stage. And I think also that Nigerians, uh, privileged Nigerians, rich Nigerians, yes, should so also join, join the government in ensuring that we are able to reach the poorest of the poor amongst us because they are the ones who suffer the most. Mm -hmm. At this point, I have to thank Jamil M.J. Abubakar, okay. the okay. son of the so former Inspector General of uh, Police, because he brought a huge quantity of food packs like this. That's Mr. Jamil M. Yeah. Jabubaka, yes, for me former, to distribute, the son of the former Inspector General. For me to distribute to people in my area. And I, and I was counting about 30 um, cartons of Indomie. And in fact, I lost count of the rice. little bags of rice that um, uh, he, he, he donated. So we want more Nigerians to come up. So you know, as if our you people are around sit Babaji at home. And the mm -hmm. vulnerable, not able bodied men, no, not, it's not staff, it's not, not people that earn their salary. And it will be recorded. It will, it will be recorded. recorded so yes, that we don't everyone want is seen, not our staff. If not you come at around all. Me, in fact, um, to, to, that's to, so ridiculous. That's why I will we chase are, you away. It is for the most vulnerable mm. in our area, in, in, in Ketu and in, in Akute. We yeah. make sure that it gets to the people that Jamil had. Solomon, there's, you know, there was always a complaint about this thing, the, the circulation. Mm -hmm. And I've gotten a lot of complaints and everything. Even some politicians, they are using it like a political tool. Again, as if there is one election tomorrow, you will see them. You just see mm -hmm. a bread. They just put somebody's face there. I see, I, the person's, uh, uh, I see the person is <laughs> campaigning. You know, if you want to do this, just do it according, as, uh, according to how blessed you are. You don't need to put your face for us to know. <laughs> uh, one of the things I have observed is that um, this pack is quite bulky. And this particular one, this particular I'm finding one it difficult. Is quite bulky. Uh, and this is different from... Let me explain that. This, this rice, 5 kg. Rice. This pack. Beans, 5 kg. That's Gary, five kg, five kg and two kg. long loaves of bread. So those are the right. Um, so you see that this 15 is fifteen kg. Mm, this yes. is quite different. Okay. Completely different from some of those things you've seen. Okay. You saw in week one of the lockdown. Okay. Some of those things you saw people kicking on the street and saying that they don't <laughs> like this. You know, is this and the all bread you have for this, us. No, this <laughs> is quite different, and you can see that mm -hmm. this is what you. This is the one for. 
the household they were talking about. Mm. And so to imagine... So conveniently to, for conveniently one month. meant for 200,000 households. 200,000 households. So, not for, so, uh, so mm. you can see... So out of 20 million Lagosians, 200 so, most So vulnerable. you can see that this um, is quite something for, a, for one household. Mm. It at makes least, a lot of sense. At least three weeks, one month. Yeah, it makes a lot of going. it makes a lot of sense. Mm. So, so, um, but then I'm looking at it this way that okay, maybe week one, we didn't. Some of the people who were supposed to do this didn't get it right, and then we've seen the feedback, mm. and you see that the Lagos State government has stepped up to rack mm. it up and say, no, this is not what we intended. This is exactly the way it should be. Bulky, this is what we planned for you. Yes. Nothing and less than this. Now, this is impressive. Now, mm. there's the problem. The reason why we had the problem we had in week one of the lockdown mm. was also because of the sense of entitlement that a lot of people have. It's our money. Even those who don't need it will rush to go there. That's and one of the things I problem. told people around me was, even that food, no matter how small it was, no matter how disdain, how disdainful you think it was, that the truth of the matter is that there are people who need even that quantity as small as it is. Mm. And so those mm, of you yeah. who do not need it don't have to go there. I think this is also the regular you, 15 You kids don't have to go there. Yes. But the problem mm. is we had a lot the of people... The, 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 bread. the streets yes. are just sent to my street. One mm. of the things I had was, oh, that people on the street were putting down their names. And I'm like, so how many people so are you going to put down their packaged. names? Okay, mm. okay. Mm. This is where it's being packaged. And they are saying that uh, 4,000 4, CDAs and CDCs are engaged to identify the vulnerables okay, in the locality. Community development areas. Yes. And the 377 councillors in Lagos, they are also involved. So mm -hmm. they are saying 97 trucks are engaged daily mm -hmm. since March 26 for the packaging and delivery of these items. So, so it, it's a big, big uh, project. Uh, project. It's good we get it. Uh, we got the perspective now. Yes. It's not for the 20 million Lagosians. No. Don't get it twisted. No. Don't say they've not distributed the food for to just 200,000 households. Just 200,000. And by the grace of God, I don't fall into this category. No. But Bajide, you don't fall into this category. No. Uh, sir, so, I want to myself. <laughs> <laughs> so it doesn't make sense if I'm complaining that I don't have access. <laughs> but you can't you go see, around. Can't this go communication down. is key. Mm -hmm. Maybe this is what um, was not got properly the first time. Yes. But I think that this communication is key. Mm. A lot of people probably were rushing up to the thing because, oh, okay, it's for everybody, it's for everybody. Mm. Now yes. you get the communication clear. Mm. It is not for everybody. It is for the most vulnerable. Yes. Mm. Uh, except you think you are most vulnerable. Okay. <laughs> and Babajide, another thing Nigerians should get, because I saw the clearance from the presidential tax force today, as that those pledges that you got, it has that you know <laughs> you have on ground, it has not transformed to money. Mm. A lot of people there's this narrative that federal government should be able to give us at least <laughs> five five thousand naira to two thousand naira for those long <laughs> list of donors that we saw. Mm. That thing <laughs> just is Another like audio money for now. It has mm. not transformed into mm. liquid cash. As at, on the third of April, we have three point five billion naira in that account. And it won't go around 200 million people. Even if, <laughs> I think it's not even meant to simply be distributed to Nigerians as physical cash. Ah, Nigerians are, they are, they are, are clamoring for that thing. Though. Oh, you see, five, five you can see what, 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 what I want to see. You see, what I want to see is a situation in which before that this coronavirus goes mm. and we'll be able to point at some uh, level of physical infrastructure. Mm. that came with it. With it. For example, Especially the hospitals. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like, like the Chinese, change. the Chinese, mm. uh, yes. uh, they, 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 they built some hospitals during the, the period. Those mm. hospitals will remain, mm. you know? So it's like we, built, we did first stack. Mm. The structures remain. Mm. The, the amphitheater where uh, mm. it was held, mm. we have it. We're told the, that the, the, the Lagos University Teaching Hospital um, Isolation Center mm. is ready now. Yes, so okay. the idea is that, okay, after this, mm. we'll be able to say, okay, this was blessing in disguise. This came with coronavirus. The health sector. Yes, so we, in, in terms of infrastructure, because infrastructure is enduring. Yes. Long after coronavirus, we should be able to see those are the enduring legacies, mm. you know, uh, mm. that people can point at. So, Lumo, this is like a kind of high opener. Mm. 
For a long time, we paid lip service to the health sector. For a long time, you have affluent, rich Nigerians crossing over to the West to go um, for um, <laughs> health care. Mm -hmm. Right now, America is battling with <laughs> its fair share of coronavirus. Even <laughs> in London now, it's like a no-go area. The British Prime Minister is <laughs> even under intensive care now, so you can't say you want to travel out. So we are all stuck here. A message. <laughs> well, the way I look at it is, well, it's rather unfortunate that um, it wasn't like something we were really prepared for. But then, as, it, as they say, it, um, uh, 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 they say necessity is the mother of invention. And so when things come like this, some of this force majeure, if you, uh, if you brace yourself up and you prepare yourself during misfortunes like this, some good things, this mm. is the silver lining at the end of the dark cloud. Mm. So we have an opportunity now to talk to ourselves. The rulers of the country have an opportunity to talk to themselves and say, mm. Okay, we didn't get this right before now, but here we are. We never know when something like this will come up again. So why don't we just get prepared? Why don't we just take this opportunity and build all of this? And so people have brought in money, and as Jude said, legacy. There must be a legacy, so something that we look at and we remember. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. coronavirus was um, an unfortunate incident, but after this is what we had after. We have uh, this 1,000 bed hospital. We have this first world class hospital that can take care of this. Now, everybody is here. The people that thought that they could get medical care abroad cannot get it abroad. In fact, they brought the illness from abroad <laughs> and brought it here. So, so, and now they cannot go back abroad to get cured. They have to stay here and uh, get it cured. States. In fact, I'm sure the Italian would have wished that more Italians were here to be cured. Instead, Italian, of dying, instead of dying, dying in Italy. <laughs> so, so this is where we need to look inwards <laughs> and, and, and be sure that we, we can do better than we've done before. Talking about compliance level, Jide, it has almost broken down in some parts of the country. In Lagos states, in Abuja, as in people are not complying again. We, the vehicular we really movement to, in Lagos we really need is to worrisome. To encourage the security agencies to to do the needful. They are not stopping people from moving around. They are not doing anything about vehicular traffic that, not is, arresting people. that is beginning to build up. I saw a picture um, that was taken today, that shot was taken today, of uh, people on uh, the Bagada Expressway. Um, they literally filled up that road mm. and they were exercising in clear disregard. Can you see? Oh, in clear disregard. Oh, this of, is uh, the Bagara Expressway. Yes, yes, this is this it's under construction. Now, what, what, what do we have here? Is, is, is there, do we have do we ha have a social uh, distancing demonstrated here? My man, so people can't be doing this. Enlightened people, you see, that because because nobody has gone there to stop them. Hmm. I will expect that this uh, of our arrest and yes. other people will go there. Just fire uh, a few <laughs> canisters of tear gas <laughs> at these people. They will go back home. But we can't have because they are even they are too close. Some of them are playing football. This is chaotic. You know, you, we can't have a situation in which people trample on our laws. You know, no no nation can survive if its citizens uh, 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 willfully disregard its laws. Eighty percent of this we are meant enlightened these people. Are, the the so-called enlightened people are the uh, regular lawbreakers. So there has tomorrow if they gather at this place to do the same thing and they get away with it, I'll be very disappointed in, 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 in the police in Lagos State. I'll call the attention of um, the need deputies, the, um, Deputy that, that, Commissioner of Police. At this judicial. point, they don't need persuasion. Yes, yes. They don't need that, persuasion. Mm. They need to be tear gas. They need to be chased out of that place. <laughs> That's the thing. Uh, this <laughs> is one picture you have seen. You it's have all over Lagos. You, you have not talked about Bariga to Akoka. Oh. From CMS Grammar School. Even that Magodo Akoka here. Road, Magodo Akoka here. Road. Uh, you road. haven't talked about, I think that it seems, it will seem that some of the most lawless people, Excellent some of the most Oba. lawless people in Lagos, they seem to live along the Koyileki axis. Mm. Uh, because even, you'll be shocked that during this lockdown, there is mm. uh, vehicular traffic. 
vehicular, there's traffic jam <laughs> in Lekki and Ekoi, where people are just driving about as if there is no lockdown. Okay. There is no there is no issue. They don't mm. care. They, they don't care. Mm. So you can understand about uh, our sister that went on holding party along that axis. Yeah. So you can understand maybe that is how everybody in Lekki behaves. Because you go to Lekki and you see vehicles moving all over the place mm. as if nothing is happening, as if there's no problem. And they are jogging the on that uh, Lekki language. <laughs> so, and so, so, and the amazing... I know this road, amazing, this road is under construction. This is Bagana yes, Railway. Yes, 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 yes. yes. The, the dual carriageway. Mm, very close to this uh, is from Antony. This is from Antony, Antony UPS, to UPS, Trem. Oguro. Yes, yes. This is just opposite trend. Facing Todd Milan Bridge. You know, yes. This is Antonio Oke. Okay. Mm. Yes. You know? This is Antonio Oke. Antonio Oke. Okay. So, okay. so, so, in a lot of places, in fact, yesterday I saw that uh, bikes are beginning to come out to carry people. Yeah, and middle is 6, 6, people now. Are commercial activities to, for commercial And they are like, we are tired of staying at yes. home. Now, we can't just sit back. The law enforcement agents cannot just, uh, agencies cannot just sit back and feel, okay, they're people not making are complying. Arrests. Yes, we, we need roads. to rack it they're up not, because even people, people are getting tired of being at home. But, but then the you need is, to be on the road they, to enforce they it. Need to, the people who are getting tired of staying at home don't understand what we are talking about. It's, it's, not, this, it's not, Nigeria is not the only country affected by this. Mm. But the clear disrespect for the directives of government, I've not seen any country where it is which is uh, so uh, flagrantly disobeyed like by this. this. That is the thing. Are they saying there are no poor people in, in uh, Rwanda? Hmm. Who dare does this in Rwanda? Hmm. In fact, two persons uh, were, were in breach of the chain. They, they fired at them. Yes, they, they were shot dead. Shoot, uh, shoot on sight. Yes, they were shot dead. So who does this? You, uh, you want to tell me that in South Africa people, people will do this? No, now. Look at people, nobody. Oh, in Saudi Arabia. Have you seen people on the street in Saudi Arabia behaving hmm. like this? So our people, our, uh, the law enforcement agents must enforce our laws. That's why they are paid. That's what they are paid to do. Enforce the law. Fire tear gas canisters at these people, they will go back home. A lot of these women, you know many women are there, and all, uh, a lot of them do not have the heart to even listen to the sound of uh, uh, tear gas. They won't come back. They won't come out the next day. Well, well my, hope, my, my, my hope, my hope, my uh, hope, my hope is that we will not get to that point. But clearly, the laws have to be enforced. All right. And people are if not going don't to try comply to do except it, they will not. We are enforced. These people okay. do not uh, uh, believe in persuasion. I think we'll uh, we'll send the cameraman there tomorrow. We we'll send. Let's see if they come out. Yeah, we now know that we don't have police <laughs> men in Lagos. Now, what is this big deal about bringing Chinese doctors to Nigeria? <laughs> because yeah. I don't know what we don't know about coronavirus already. Do we need the expertise of the Chinese people right now? And if what's <laughs> the bone of contention for the Nigerian Medical Association? Well, the NMA, the NMA and um, the resident doctors are saying, look, so far we've done very well. Uh, in spite of the, uh, the constraints, mm -hmm. we've done very well. And it's true. Mm -hmm. we've, we've seen policemen and uh, civil defense stopping uh, doctors from going to work. The same people who cannot go and stop people uh, from no, exercising on the mm, major mm, road and mm, Bagada. Stopping now, on essential duty. these doctors are saying, look, the spike in cases and the rise in death toll in Italy coincided with the arrival of, of the Chinese in the name of trying to help. So what they are saying is that at this time, we don't need them. Our people on ground, they are doing well. They are taking they risks. Discharging, they are taking know, risks. We are seeing the results. Yes, the results. So what do we, really, what do they, what do we need now. them for? That's the point that they are making. That you can't, you, you, you we really don't need them at this time. So, and they even talked about the conspiracy, the conspiracy theory that is out there that, look, this is the result of biological warfare and that the, um, that itself has not been cleared. So, so we really don't need these they Chinese people. The, like a security uh, Yes, that we really don't need these Chinese people at this time. But the government is saying, look, we need them to help us um, in, in the area of improving our molecular testing. Molecular testing, uh, uh, the, the Minister they, of State said we they, have just two, just two experts in Nigeria, hmm. whereas we have seven test centers. Hmm. So that they will help us train our people and they will help us also build and upgrade the molecular testing centers. So okay. they, don't, they don't have to touch our people. Let me pick this call from Lagos. Precious is calling us from Lagos. Thank you for joining us. Hello? Hello. 
my name is Michael. Thank you for hanging out with us. Yeah, uh, thank you, Mr. Baba today. Thank you, and the other presenter there. I really appreciate what you people are doing. Yeah, my challenge was um, the picture I just I saw from the Bagada newly constructed way. It's a shame that enlightened and educated, or should I say, civilized people are doing this. And uh, what is my concern is this is because there are numbers of deaths, confirmed cases from other developed countries. Mm. And we Nigerians, yeah, we are not even putting that into consideration that if this thief gets to us, we we are not going to survive this. At all. We don't we have what it is. Our system is not strong enough. Yes. Our mm. government is not strong enough. Our economy is too weak for this. Mm. But what is paining me is because this uh, the police uh, agency, the or security agency per se, they are not helping us. They are not helping us. I don't see why people are using this this um, uh, pandemic as an opportunity to enrich their pocket. Look, look at those people doing their money exercise there. There are some people organizing this uh, exercise. Why don't you prosecute those people? Why don't you make yeah, arrests? Nigeria, we learn mm -hmm. from lessons. We, we, we need to, they need to experience enforcement before we, before we learn. Thank you, Precious. Thank you for your contribution. I'll take this break. When we come back, we'll talk more. It's still journalist hangout. Please stay with us. Don't go away. It's a multi-award winning program, live on television, Continental, here in Lagos, Nigeria. And we are looking at the coronavirus pandemic and we're still doing an update on the level of compliance. Babajide, what do we expect moving further? We still have six more days to go, officially, from the federal government of Nigeria in Lagos, Ogun State and Abuja. I think that the number of confirmed cases has a lot to do with the degree uh, um, of testing. So when you see the number of confirmed cases in South Africa on our own, you will there. see that they are, ability are, they are to higher. Test. So chances are that when more people are tested, mm -hmm. we could have experienced a spike, but we pray that this doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. Then of course, there are people who are still sabotaging the effort. Look at a, uh, an academic in, in, in Ilone mm. who knew that one of uh, his relations came in mm. from one of these uh, um, Irish countries and he clearly lied that that person suffered food poisoning mm. and they began to treat him. Mm. Invariably, he died. Mm. Why not just say the truth? So that this person can get the right treating you for food poisoning. No, just to be able to bring the person in into the hospital uh, for treatment yeah. instead of going on uh, isolation. isolation and all that. Why are we doing this to ourselves? A professor. professor but I'm happy that the governor of uh, Kuala State has suspended yeah. the professor and I believe that he should even be further punished by his uh, own professional body. What do you expect that's, these ahead? That's um, rather unfortunate. Um, uh, your chances of survival is the chances of any um, anyone who's caught, who, who has the symptoms or who is a carrier, who may not even know of surviving, is that first you be truthful to yourself, you report. Because first and foremost, this is not something you can treat in private in any hospital around. Um, you have to be handled officially. So you have to declare, we have to know, so that you can be taken to the isolation center and be given the proper medical attention. Uh, we've been hearing things about people who are not showing up, who end up showing up at the very last minute mm. and it becomes fatal, you know? Mm. So your, chance of so your chances of survival when so you are caught with this is that you report yourself very early. early so mm. that you can save yourself. Well, actually, the, the bad news for some Lagosians, I don't want to, maybe the governors will, I mean, the government will inform us, but we have prospects of even extending this lockdown so that to stem the tide. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> permanently. No, no if a, if a, <laughs> the question to ask is, have you achieved your aim? Governor Sonwolu has already hinted that it could be extended. Extended. So, so they will review it and ask themselves if the uh, their intention had been achieved. If the intention had not been achieved and you can sense danger in the coming days and weeks, then there's no doubt that we're going to It's go. going to rely on expert um, uh, 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 advice uh, of doctors. Yes, uh, it's uh, working. They are, the they are meeting, for, uh, health they are meeting the, every day. Mm, we are having sleep last update, night on yes. this matter. Well, you know. So he will see clearly why he has to take a decision. And I'm sure he will not be afraid to take that decision. All right, so moving on now. Like a lion that has tasted blood, there's no stopping Chadian troops in their offensive against Boko Haram fighters. Despite recent successive victories against the insurgents, the Chadians are pushing forward for total victory, forcing the insurgents to relocate from Child Island to Gudumbali in Guzamali local government area of Borno State, Northeast Nigeria. Now, the president of Chad, Idris Debi, has sounded a notice of warning to Boko Haram leader Abubakar Shekau to surrender or face imminent deaths. But will Shekau bow to the pressure from Debi and throw in the tour? Let's hear from President Idris Debi. chef d'état major de l'armée de terre, le 6 septembre 2019, M. Mahmoud Suleiman. Le chef de l'État qui se déplace au euh, théâtre des opérations pendant 12 jours, les Tchadiens ont raison de se demander. Mais euh, je voudrais tout simplement leur dire que nous avions un objectif, celui de détruire le Boko Haram sur, à l'intérieur du territoire national. Je peux rassurer aujourd'hui les Tchadiens que l'ensemble de la zone insulaire euh, qui fait frontière avec le Cameroun, le Nigeria et le Niger. Il n'y a pas un seul Boko Haram aujourd'hui au Tchad. Nous avons atteint tous nos objectifs qui étaient tenus à le poste de commandement, les deux postes de commandement essentiels dans le Black Tchad ont été donc repris par nos forces et ils ont détruit sérieusement euh, Boko Haram. Our goal has been reached, Babajire. The Chadian president saying it authoritatively that right now in Chad, there's no single Boko Haram in the territory in the Chad, of Chad. In the islands of uh, Lake Chad. Chad. Not just, not just Chadian territory. Hmm. The islands. Of Lake Chad, including the, the one that includes Nigeria. Including the, the, That's Albanawi's uh, stronghold. Yes. The fishing As you are told, town. all of those Lake Chad islands have been cleaned up. They yeah. didn't just fight. So people who have seen some comments that, oh, so this man knew that Boko Haram was in his territory. He didn't touch them all this while. They do not know that the bulk of this fight was in Nigerian territory. Didn't they see the video of Nigerian soldiers who were hailing them as they were driving past inside Nigerian territory? They came inside. They came in. And he's saying, uh, uh, he said, we want to continue combing operations in the countries like Cameroon, Cameroon Nigeria, yeah. and Niger. Boko Haram should not be left in any of these countries. Hmm. Helping but us. He's saying that. Serving the purpose of... These are people who know no boundary or sovereignty of a hmm. country. That is why I'm still keeping our forces inside Nigeria. Hmm. So it's not as if... Oh, now doing the work of the Joint Multinational Tax Force. Which that is the way... You see, the Joint Multinational Tax Force is not... Uh, well structured mm. and it is not, not well efficiently funded, mm. uh, funded and run. Mm. That is why everyone just does what he likes. How many times? For he example, pulled out. Uh, w many times, pulled out many times he will pull out and just mm. conduct operations. They conduct mm. operations when they like. You know, Cameroon will call them, come and help us deal with Boko Haram in our territory. They will go in there. You know, so if multinational joint tax force had been very efficient. Look at when, when if, if the multinational joint task force was properly structured, structured 
with every country contributing troops and everything mm. at all times, would Boko Haram have been able to take Baga, the headquarters of multinational joint task force? Mm. But they took Baga now. Mm. They took Baga. And they, they, they went away with equipment. In, as I speak to the, the Nigerian Navy has not returned to Baga. Let anyone tell me that I'm lying. Nigerian Navy, their headquarters in the Northeast is in Baga. They have not returned. I'm saying that authoritatively. Boko Haram took over. So the truth is, what this man is doing is like, okay, now, if we do not kill them, they will come back. It's as simple as that. If you, you, you've cleaned out the Tumbus, the islands of Lake Chad, you've kept that place clean, they fled. But you know, they knew that these guys will come for them. And the report we have is that in about 30 vehicles, including gun trucks and motorcycles, Boko Haram men were sighted running away from the Lake Chad area to Shelawa village about seven kilometers north of Gudumbali. Gudumbali is the headquarters of uh, Guzamala local government. That is the local government of the speaker of the Borno State House of Assembly. He has not gone to his house, to his village, in almost three years. He's watching me as I speak. Because how do you go to a place that is not safe? So what we have, the challenge we have now is to build on what the uh, Chadians have done. People are sending me stories of 1983 when Buhari chased Chadians deep into their territory, when Buhari was mm. commander of three divisions. We have no business in those stories. I'm a historian. <laughs> I know the story that you are talking about. Our business is today's, today's war. And the child of that time, you can't compare to the child of today. As I speak to you, France and Israel, they are helping Chad to build his Industri uh, military Modernized. industrial complex. In addition to giving them weapons and all that, and giving, and them, giving intelligence. them intelligence. That's critical. Intelligence that is critical in locating the precise location of an Decision enemy. guarded attacks. That's the, where the Israelis are strong. The Israelis may not give you uh, say weapons to you, uh, but they we can provide Tracy intelligence. The They've always been good. Even America relies on them when it comes to intelligence. So this is the thing. Let us build on it. He said, I'm keeping my troops inside both countries. Because he knows they will come back. If you give them time to hibernate, they will come back. That is it. So the best thing is, as they are running away, we go for them. And he has told Shekau that he knows where he is. That he has been surrounded. He, no, not surrounded. Mm -hmm. He knows where he is. That at this time, it's better you give up. Shekau is sober. If you look at the last... Uh, um, uh, audio clip. Shukau did not even have the courage to do a video. He did audio clip. He was literally begging. He said, leave us alone, Chadians. Shekau, the Shekau that I know, or that I used to know, would even be insulting you, be threatening you, or mocking you. Look at what he posted about the president, calling the president a slave of cows. So, but today he's sober. He, he mocks, when, our, when the Nigerian army came up with Operation Gamma Aiki, he said, Kuna so ku utane, that you people want a rest. And now Neza Mufara, but we have just started now. <laughs> that you have not, you, that that, Gamma Aiki, uh, Gamma Aiki is, means finish the job. He said, no, you have not finished. You know, okay, Farah. we have just started. He mocks that you will abuse our generals, you will abuse our president. But today, that same Shekau is talking like someone begging. That if, if, if you say you are going to kill us, we know that God will come for us. God will support us. You, um, Solomon, what can we get out of this? No, just the, imagine. The giant of Africa, the Nigerian army, the inspiration to be drawn from this operation, this Chadian operation, and this leadership, um, the, uh, you know, style of Idris Deby. Uh, 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 Idris Deby is a war-tested general, first and foremost. You have to respect that. That's a general, a head of state, a man who overthrew, who fought many years of war uh, uh, in Chad. You know, Chad has gone through many years of civil war. Of Both course, you can't, uh, you can't say that Nigeria didn't go through a civil war. You didn't go through a civil mm, war as long war. as that. Mm. And then he was part of the rebel group that came from the north and uh, overran Chad, uh, took over in Jamina, 
from uh, Hissin Habre. In, uh, well, he was part of the rebel group along with Hissin Habre that overthrew the f very first president, uh, uh, Francois Tombombayi. And then he, they went on to fight amongst themselves where he eventually overthrew Hissin Habre as a general back then. So um, I guess this is one of the things about the lack of coordination in the joint task force. You can imagine if when the Chadians decided that they were going to carry out this onslaught, if the Nigerian end of the military had also, you know, been part of it. So while mm -hmm. those guys are coming from this end, you can so flank them up on another, Nigeria, you know, you can just take them out. Them them. So it seems as if it's just Chad acting on its own and want, wanting to just end the job, you know. Uh, I, feel, I, I feel disheartened to see that Chadian troops will come in, Nigerian soldiers will be hailing them instead of joining in the fight because most of this job, most of these attacks have been done in Nigerian territory. We can't just sit back and allow this ha go, and, go and, like that. And I think we've even lost more. We've lost more soldiers, we've lost, we've lost more more civilians, so we've so lost, you know, so many things. When we, you remember, when I we remember... We suffer more, more pains. When I remember the battles, big battles between Nigerian Army and Boko Haram, Metele, Zari, Gudumbali, Gajiran, so many, so many battles. You, you, you know that we have lost so many officers, so many soldiers have been lost. And whatever we can do at this stage, officers and rank and file. The truth, the truth is. The Abanawi faction and their leaders, they were not staying in the Lake Chad area alone. There are some of them hiding along the border between Nigeria and Niger Republic in Yobe State. And all that we need to do is identify the, uh, the where they are and take out these guys. These guys have got the resources, they've got money. If you see some of the videos of captured Boko Haram fighters, mm. you know they are not Nigerians. Mm. Because you can't imagine a Kanuri man, for example, mm. where, where, where dreadlocks. wearing dreadlocks. And those Chadian fighters were caught in their hair. Many of them are contract mm. fighters Personalist. who used to fight as rebels mm. against the Chadian army. The Chadian army had been prepared for this kind of asymmetry warfare because 40 years of fighting makes you tough, okay. gives you experience. Okay, look at look These at are weapons, weapons that they seized uh, yes, from, the, from the warehouse of uh, uh, Boko Haram. You know, once you take away the weapons, what do they then fight with? It's one this way is, of breaking the back of the enemy. This hmm. is huge. What, what do they this fight with? Huge. They will have to fight uh, with bare hands. An invasion of the army. You know, look uh, at the happened. weapons here. Going to the armory. Look at and this is not everything. Look at the weapons here. I, I, I saw some gun trucks. Some were bombed. Some were yes. bombed. Some yes. were destroyed. Trucks, you know. Bombed. You know. So this is the thing. We need to seize the moment. Exactly. All the people abusing. The momentum uh, is. This, they are abusing uh, uh, President uh, um, um, President uh, Debbie. That oh he had always wanted to capture Bono territory this and that. Uh, <laughs> they should stop that. We don't need that propaganda this at this time. Chadians have sacrificed their lives because of a terrorist group that came out of Nigeria. I remember in 2015 when they came to fight here, they lost many of their men, but they made good progress. They are a seasoned uh, fighting group. And this is a fallout of the attack on their own soldiers. They just mm. couldn't take it. And they felt that they've had enough of this. Um, if only we will have the same resolve to say, we have had enough of this, we've lost we more out. men, let's go all out. I think that this is the time to, to the take more. it and get the job done, complement what the Chadians are doing at the moment, get the Cameroonians as well, and let, let's have a final push and get uh, these guys out of, out of our land so that we can have some peace in the northeast of Nigeria. So that redevelopment some, can happen in that area. Some people said why the joint multinational attacks force failed was that the, the Chadian soldiers led by Idris Deby was regularly requesting for money why? for President Mamadou Buhari and... Uh, well, I've not, had, fund, uh, I've not had Buhari say that. 
people can also say a lot of rubbish. I've not heard Buhari complain. But this president said something today. President Debbie, he praised Rwanda, he praised Sudan, he praised Nigeria for so giving them logistical support. Mm -hmm. Nigeria too. Yes. It okay. is, whether we like it or not, it is our war. Mm. You understand? Mm. When America went to the Gulf to fight, mm. did, and they destroyed Iraq, did American uh, 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 contractors not come back to rebuild Iraq? Mm. Are they saying that America did not benefit from invading Iraq monetarily? Mm. When even during that time, they were literally controlling the oil wealth of that country. So the truth is, it is your war. If the enemy needs, because whether we like it or not, war is very difficult and very expensive to prosecute. Mm. If you know how much it costs to service tanks, if you know how much a T-72 Russian tank, for example, how many uh, liters of, uh, of, 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 of petrol, of, of petrol it co I mean, of uh, diesel, it consumes, you will know that war is expensive. And if he's asking we'll for money... Aircraft. Yes. Hmm. Uh, Nigeria spends more than 345 million mm. every month to fuel the Air Force uh, planes alone. Mm. Uh, even the, even the, the bombs, mm. some of those bombs cost as high as 12,000 euros, just one. 12,000 euros? Yes, 250 pound bombs. And you'll be throwing it. Well, it's not easy. So if it comes, if you want him to come and fight euros. in your country, of course, you have to negotiate. What do they come? What do they get out of it? When you have who is that president who will simply come and put twelve? To, you, 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 you put the lives of your own people on uh, on the line mm. just to go and die. No, nobody does that now. You ask me, what war. is your interest? Hmm. What is your interest? There must be a spoil of war. Yes. So at the end of the day, they must get something from it. Affected us more. Okay. So Negative. is it because of that that we now we cannot clean up our own mess? Are we going to say, oh, oh, when, when they killed our troops and they were sacking our troops on their bases, was he the one sacking our troops Even on their the bases? Even the super tanks went to, was on at, at, at Was he the one? Was he the one chasing away our soldiers on their bases? Was he the one who, who uh, uh, stopped the, uh, the, the military from advancing the other day? And at the end of the day, we removed Operation uh, uh, Adole commander. We can't be uh, attacking a man who is helping us to clean up our mess. If we had fixed Boko Haram since 2009, that won't be Boko Haram today. It won't be. He has yeah. his own problems in his country. He has come to our country. He's helping us to keep... He said something that, that the, the, the lives of Chadians lost in Bono because they, they've come to fight on our territory and they, they sometimes die. Ironically, Chad, Chad is not a financially buoyant country. It's not as if they have, uh, things are rosy with that country. It also depends. But they are strong it military depe wise. It depends on the cost you place on lives. So it's not, sometimes it's not about how rich you are, it's about the cost on lives. So mm. if you send men to war and they die, or if people are living in peace and then a marauding group comes around and clears them, uh, what is your reaction? Will you say because you do not have money? You have a job as a leader of a country to protect lives, to ensure that people... Is, protecting lives is part of welfare. Security is part of the welfare of the people. Mm. People should have the liberty to do their businesses, to go about their lives in peace. Mm. And so if the Chadian president has felt, okay, these people have done... They have uh, killed our people. We can't let it go. And it is time to get the vengeance for all Chadian soldiers mm. that have lost their lives in this battle. All well and good for us. I think, what I think we should do now is to step up. We need to step up. Okay. The war is on our own well, territory. The chief of army staff is in, uh, is in my, uh, my, uh, my degree, was in my degree today. I don't know if he's gone back. I expect him to come up with the right strategies to finish this battle. These guys have helped us. They've destroyed the armory. I think it's they've, they've, they've rendered them impotent. They, they made them to run. It's an ongoing now, operation now. Yes. And they are still they are still at it. So we need to consolidate. Exactly. We need to work we with them and finish and this battle. Exactly. Once and for they are all. vulnerable now. Yes, they are this, vulnerable. This is, no this is the time. This you is know, the I always time. say that. You know that area. Mm. They didn't want Nigerian troops to control that but no not all of those mm. lecture areas mm. because Fishing. it was a supply route. Yes. You know, I've always said yes. it. Yes, they, you know? 
the now, ammunition. Now, once you, you want to effectively take care of that area, mm. where do we, where will weapons now come in hmm. for them? So right. there are days, the, the, the days, um, um, the end of Boko Haram is close. Hmm. If we seize close. the time, mm. if, if we, we seize, seize the, the moment. moment, if we seize the moment. Oh, right. Professor Shulaman, <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank Don't you. Don't worry, that's on the honorary <laughs> the title. And Baba Jide, oh. the master himself, thank you for always doing this with us. And that's our offering. Join us tomorrow for another episode of the program. And what journalists hang out on our platform showing on the screen. We're on YouTube, youtube.com slash TVC News Nigeria. Our feedback channel is journalistangouts.tv. I'm Ayodili Ozuwafa. Please be safe. Come here. Well, I'm not to disbelieve this. <laughs>